Today we're going to do Rahab hid the spies. So open your scripture page if you can. Um, I'm going to use this. Yes. It's important to understand that. No, stop. All right, here we go. Hallelujah, Father. We give you all the glory, all the praise. Amen. Let's pray and ask God to lead us. So, Father, we just pray for your um, intervention, for your amazing love. And what is going on here? Just give me a second. All the, the, the apps are opening here right now. Okay, open your scripture page if you have to. Get a pen and a paper if you want to. And let's get down to the word. Amen. So, Father, we just give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. We thank you, Father, for what you've taught us so far. And, yeah, the lessons are really, really deep. We just thank you, Lord God. And we, we, we just say, teach us like you always do, Daddy. Because you, Abba Jesus, are teacher and we're the students. Help me to give not my private interpretation or um, my private opinion. Just give things the way you give it. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. Amen. Uh, let's see what, what, what. Okay, so I have the screen here and scripture page here. The last time we did what? They, they saw him walk on the water. And we saw why he did that at night. If you ever wondered, I always wondered. I'm like, why four in the morning? But then I knew uh, that... Um, hello. How are you? Um, busy. I see you. You know what I saw? Yeah, but... So how are you? Good. How are you? Do you have any other colors? Color, <laughs> Yay! Blue, blue. God loves me. I'm good. You good? Yes, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm about to start the ceremony. Just pause and check me and you. Yep. All right, thanks. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Right. So, I got a gift. <laughs> Anyway, <clears throat> all right, so hallelujah. So last time we looked at, he, they saw him walk on the water and he, sh well, father, not he, but father showed us um, why he did it at night and just, you know, what, what was the meaning behind all of it and why he actually did walk on water. You know, it's not something that was needed, but it's something that he wanted to do so that um, he could be revealed to each one of his disciples, I'm closing this, okay, that um, they could all have a personal testimony of him and know that he's more than a man. Amen? So now let me just get um, some music and we'll get started. So just to be safe, I'm going to um, just play the, you know, the instrumental because they never block videos for that so and the holy spirit loves music so we're gonna do it anyway fill my cup lord i lift it up lord come and quench this thirsting of my soul Yes, Lord. All right, Father, have your way. Did I spell rehab's name correctly? Because I had it as rehab, and I know it's not rehab, it's rehab. It's funny. All right, so open your scripture page, let's get started. We're looking. 
Yes, I got soaked in the rain, but that's beside the point. All right. Um, <clears throat> here we go. All right. All right, so the first thing I hear is the Lord will take what is meant for evil. Turn it around. All right, so that's, we're going to go further. We're not going to read it yet. This is wait for a while. I hear Asarius. Who's Asarius? Who's King Asarius? King Asa. How do you spell that? Rias. Who's King Asa? I don't know who's King Asa. Don't ask me what I mean. I just like what I'm hearing here. I think it's a Y, not an I. I hear King Asarius give a command. I don't know who. Um, King of Osiris, King Osiris, I don't know who or what. We're going to search it out. I hear something about Job. This is definitely Job. Friends. I hear two things about Job. I hear about his friends and I hear about his wife. We have a hope. We have a hope that we can hold up. I hear that. I think. Yes, Father, have your way. Have your way. Okay, we're seeing Jonah here now in the boat. The boat was headed for Tarshish. Well, if I could be specific here, I see like when they they bow down to the idols. I see Father's hand and he's showing me the seed and he just says, if you believe, you know, like a grain of mustard seed, he's showing me his hand, I don't know. Eh. Yeah, more. All right, let's find these. For now, let's find these because this is a lot. All right. 
the first one, I see his hands and I see the little seed. And I see, well, well, first, before I saw his hand, I saw the mountain. So I know that's the scripture with the mustard seed. So we're going there into, where? where is it? Matthew 17, 20. I hear him saying one good deed repays another or something like that. Or deserves another. One good, one, wait, one good the deserves or repays another, I don't know. I'm fine both. I hear the Lord has no shows no Hallelujah. All right, so we're going. The Lord has, he shows no partiality with men. First. That's what I hear first. So we're going there first. Romans 2, 11. And Acts 10, 34. Uh, all right, Romans 2, 11. Romans 2, 11, and it says in verse 10 to 12, But glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good, first for the Jew and then for the Greek. For God does not show favoritism. I heard partiality. I think we need to go into King James Version. Romans 2, 11. I want that word partiality. We're looking at verse 11, so we're looking at 10 to 12, and it says, But glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. Where is the partiality? <laughs> we will find it. Verse 12, for as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Verse 13, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. All right, so he makes that very, very clear. And he says, hey, we can't just be hearers, we have to be doers also, right? But we know that we're in a fallen world, we're in a fallen state, and people don't really care what, what, I can't take this here thing moving anymore, okay? Okay, people, they don't really care anymore about law. They don't care about who holds authority, they don't care about who is in charge, who needs to be esteemed, who needs to be exalted. People have lost their fear of justice. They, they are, the Bible says that in the last days, what? Lawlessness will abound. We're going there. I need to find that flash out of the scripture still. So looking for that. Let's see here now. In the last days, lawlessness will abound. Matthew 24, verse 12. 
Verse 12, so we're reading verse 11 onwards. Verse 12, verse 11 onwards. Matthew 12, Matthew 24. Verse 11 to 13. And many false prophets will arise and mislead many because of the multiplication of wickedness. The love of most will grow cold. Verse 13. But the one who perseveres to the end will be saved. Is it going to be easy? No. Father says the multiplication of wickedness. Many false prophets will rise out of it, right? It says many false prophets will arise and mislead many. Because of the multiplication of wickedness, the love of most will go cold. Nobody cares for anybody anymore. It's all, it's, hey, it's already dark. Why not? I like, why should I like this light? You know, why should I? show some kind of what difference will it make you ever came to a point of hopelessness or just a point where you're like oh if i do this what what point is it what what is it going to do what difference is it going to make right it says the love of most will go cool verse 13 but the one who perseveres to the end will be saved this fan is just moving these things in my eyes and i don't like it all right, it says, but the one who perseveres to the end, to persevere means to what? To strive, to push forward, to continue, to, to make it. Just a second. King James Version, Acts 10.34. Acts 10, 34, reading verse 33 to 35. What is this? What, 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 what? Okay. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast done well, that thou would come. Now therefore we are present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person, but in every nation that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. You heard that? We're going to read it again. But every nation, we're reading verse 34 of Acts 10. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation that every nation, he that feareth him and worketh in righteousness is accepted with him. Verse 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is the Lord of all. All right, hold on a second. One more. Sorry. No, I didn't want to do that. Okay. <clears throat> I'm a second. It's playing really bad here right now. And I do. They're being very loud. Or oh, it's annoying. Here we go. Open. Oh, 
All right. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good for you to come. Now we all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Verse 34, then Peter began to speak and said, Now I realize how true, true it is that God shows no favoritism, but, accept, but accepts from every nation the one who, who fears him and does what is right. Amen? So all nations. We, what, makes us, what makes us acceptable? Christ. So when we receive Christ, what happens? Come like right that. They're giving me pieces. I don't like this. When the internet is slow, pick up the Bible. It just take me a little while. All right. Acts verse ten. Acts ten verse three thirty three to thirty five. Ish. Liquids and computers don't mix. Acts 10, verse 33 to 35, and it says, Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast done that thou art come. Now therefore we are all here, present, before who? Not man, but before God, to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. And then Peter opened his mouth, verse 34, and said of a truth, I perceive that God has no respect to a person. Remember when Peter was like, hey, you know, I I've never eaten anything unclean or, um, you know, he's a Hebrew and he thought God was just for the Hebrews, right? And then these Roman soldiers came and all this kind of thing. Yeah. All right. So verse 34. But in every nation, he that feared him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. So the fear of the Lord is what? It's a gift that every man can have not certain people but every man because the blood of jesus was poured out for each one of us all right going on to the next verse <clears throat> we heard the love of the lawlessness will abound all right we heard lawlessness will abound The internet is messing up and it is getting me irritated. Matthew 24, 12. Voila. All right. And it says in verse 11, And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. Jesus speaking, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. Verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. All right, listen to this now. Romans 2, verse, what was it? 11, right? It says, But glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. God shows no partiality. All right, verse 12. For as many as have sinned without law shall perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So, Father, he shows, hey, I must be at work in you. And whoever he's at work in that does the thing that he says to do, he likes. Now, something like one good deed repays another. So we're looking at deeds replay something in Bible verse. 
Bring some water. Romans 2, 6. God will repay each one according to his deeds. We can read that. Or the treasure you store up, that you will have. All right. Romans 2, 6, reading verse 5 to 7. But because of your hard and unrepented heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. Wow. And verse 6, God will repay each one according to his deeds. To those who... By perseverance in doing good, seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give, what? Eternal life. Romans 2, 6. But after the hardness and impotent heart, treasure, ah, there we go, treasure, treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Verse 6, who will render to every man according to his deeds? Verse 7, to, to, to them who by patient continuance, perseverance, in well-doing, seek for the glory and honor and immortality and eternal life. Whatever you store up, that is what you're going to have as reserves, right? Whatever you have done and you continue to do, God is taking note. You will be rewarded accordingly. Not all rewards are good. And we're looking at Matthew 17... Verse 20. I'm itchy and this thing's blowing. Here when I do. So I'm going to irritate it. Matthew 17, verse 20. Matthew 17, verse 20, reading verse 19 to 21. See, so but you got to choose a side. You got to choose a side, and whichever side you stand on, God is going to watch and He's taking notes. And then later, well, you're going to be rewarded accordingly. All right? Matthew 17, 20, reading verse 19 to 21. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart. And said, why should we not cast him out? Oh, why could we not cast him out? Remember, we couldn't, they couldn't cast out the demon, right? So, in verse 20, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say to you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, You shall say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Verse 20, verse 21, sorry, of Matthew 17. Howbeit this kind goeth not out by prayer and fasting. All right. So Jesus said, listen, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you could do anything. But he said, so they're like, well, how can we not do it? And it's like, well, where's your faith? Right? All right, check this out. He says, you shall say to this mountain, which is what I saw before I saw his hand, the mountain, and then his hand with his tiny seed. And you shall say to this mountain, be removed from your place and be cast into the ocean, and it shall be done. Right? Now, hmm, how do I put this in there? Do you want me to do that now? Okay, we're going into our scripture verse right now. In 
Joshua two-ish. Joshua chapter two, verse one to eight. Joshua chapter 2, verse 1. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent two men secretly from Shittim, or Shittim, or whatever, as spies, saying, Go, view the land, especially Jericho. And they went and came into the house of a prostitute whose name was Rahab. whose name was Rahab, and they lodged there. Verse 2, And it was told to the king of Jericho, Behold, men of Israel have come tonight to search out the land. All right. So stop right there. They went to who? Rahab, the prostitutes. Because they're thinking that's the last place they would look, right? All right. So now we're going to see where she hides them. We're going to read verse 3. The king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who entered your house, for they have come to search out the land. Verse 4. But the woman had taken the two, but the woman, sorry, the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. And she said, True. The men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. And verse 5, And when the gate was about to be closed at dark, the men went out. I do not know where the men went. Pursue them quickly, for you will overtake them. Pursue them quickly, for you will overtake them. Verse 6, but she had brought them up to the roof and hid them with the stalks of flax that she laid in order on the roof. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to read this. Verse 7, so the men pursued them on the way to the Jordan as far as the forts, and the gate was shut as soon as the pursuers had gone out before the men lay down she came up to them on the roof she came up to them on the roof they're hiding on the roof now, they came to spy out her country, and she was supposed to be a part of that, right? She was supposed to be a part of the disaster to take place on her country, which is literally an invasion. Check this out. All right, Joshua 2. We're reading from verse 9 to 10. Okay, she came up to them by the roof and she said to them, I know that the Lord has given you the land and the fear of you has fallen upon us. You hear what she said? What is going on here? Oh, I don't know what's going on here. All right. Okay, and said, I know the Lord has given you the land, and the fear of you has fallen upon us. And all the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. When you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites, remember we did that sermon, who were beyond the Jordan, to Shion, or Sion, or Sion, Sion, and Og, whom you devoted to destruction. Verse 11. As soon as we heard it, 
our hearts melted, and there was no spirit left in any man because of you. For the Lord, your God, he is God in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. Now that's also a scripture that we did, and a sermon that we did in depth, where the fear of the Lord fell upon all the surrounding lands or distant lands, all right? Because they heard what he had done to Israel. Now, she has confessed that for the Lord, your God, is God in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. So even though she's not an Israelite, whatever she is, I don't know what, what is she? Okay, whatever she is, she has just confessed that Jesus is Lord, that he is Lord of the heavens and the earth. And now verse 12, well, the I am, right? Which is Jesus Christ. Now then, now then, we swear to me by the Lord that I, that I, as I have dealt kindly with you, you will also deal kindly with my father's house. And my sisters, I'm um, sorry, you will surely deal kindly with my father's house and give me a sure sign. Verse 13, that you will save alive my father and my mother, my brothers and my sisters, and all who belong to them, and deliver our lives from death. And verse 14, then the men said to her, our life for yours, even to the death. All right, so... That's kind of like a repaying or a reward. You know when someone does something for you and he said, good, we're even. All right, so check this out. So then the men said to her, what? Our life for yours, even to death. All right. And he said, and what's going on with this thing here? And I go into here. All right. Do I want to go live? I don't know. Do I? I my hair is just flooding right now. All right. Here's what he said. So he said, our lives for yours. She saved them. Hey. She saved them. So now they're going to save hers, right? I know. No, listen to what they say. If you do not tell this business of ours, then when the Lord gives us the land, we will, we will deal kindly and faithfully with you. Now, it's not a bribe. It's more of a bargain because it's the lies we're talking about here, right? They said, hey, you save ours, we're going to save yours and your families, okay? One good turn deserves another. All right. We're going on now. We're stopping right there for now. And we're, going, we're continuing in the scriptures that we got. All right, the man in the boat with the Jonah was bowing down to idols. So we're going to look at that just really quickly. No theologian, my goodness. Jonah 1, 14. Jonah... Jonah 1, verse 13 to 16. Okay. First, the King James Version, because I see that here first. And we're reading. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea was the sea wrought and was temp tempestuous against them. Verse 14, wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. That's not what I'm looking for. Excuse me. Jonah 1. Verse 
So while Jonah would have thought, okay, we're going into Jonah 1. Let's read first and then we'll talk off though. All right, so we're reading 1 verse 4 to 6. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Wow, that's bad, right? That's when a ship is about to be broken, that's bad. Verse 5, then the marinas were afraid of the sailors, and they cried every man unto his God. They what? They cried every man unto his God. So each one of them had a different God. And like, this was a God, this was a God, this was a God, everything was a God, right? It says, each man cried unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster, the captain, came to him and said to him, What meanest thou, you sleeper? Arise and call upon thy God. If God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. You think God thought about them, those, those men in the ship? Think about it. Jonah thought he'd hopped a ship to go to Tarshish. But could he really run from God? No. But while he's on his way, God says, You know what? In your rebellion, I'm going to make you meet these men in this ship. And these men, you're going to be a witness of me to them. All right? So that's exactly what happened. Because here's what he said. Um, verse 7. And they said unto everyone to his fellow, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know for who, whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and lots fell on Jonah. The lot fell on Jonah. Verse 8. And then he said to him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause is this evil upon us? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And what people are you? Verse 9. And he said unto them, I'm a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord. The God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. And verse 10. And then the men were exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew he had fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Verse 11. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrath and was temp temp tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So that the sea shall be calm unto you. For I know that it is for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Verse 13. That is a powerful verse right there. Verse 13. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not. For the sea wrath and the tempestuous was against and was tempestuous against them. Verse 14, wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done it as it pleased thee. So listen. They told God, Hey, you're a just God. Don't, don't take me out with these because these were evil. And God shows no partiality with men, but he loves those who fear him. Or they're pleasing to him. So now we're reading verse 15. So they took up Jonah and cast him into the sea, and the sea he ceased from her raging. Verse 16. Then the men, the same men who were bowing down to the idols, they feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. They offered a sacrifice to the one true living God. And they made vows. 
All right, so Jonah might have thought he was running away from the presence of the Lord, but he was really running to the duty of what God wanted him to do. And it so happens that the Lord wishes nobody to perish. Amen? He doesn't neglect any, he neglects no one. So he sent Jonah to these as well. He allowed Jonah to run. You think he couldn't have thrown down a, a tree in front of him or even forced him right there, stop right there, you know? God could have done that, but God didn't because he had, he had to bear witness of the one true living God. All right. The boat was headed for Tarshish. In Jonah 1 3, so this is what Jonah's decision was to just say, hey, get up and run. Forget this. These people are the enemies of my people, and I don't want them to receive pardon. I want them to perish. That's what Jonah was thinking, right? Nineveh. Jonah 1 3, verse 2 to 4. Arise and go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. Verse 3, Jonah, however, got up and fled to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. You think he really did that? He thought he did that. He went down to Joppa and found a ship bound for Tarshish. So when he paid the fare and went aboard, to sail from Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. What was he thinking, huh? How many of us like to run in our own path? We think that if we escape a place or a person, we escape the rebuke or the wrath of God. We, we, we think that we can hide from God. We think that we can... Um, oh... Flee from his presence, so to speak. But is God just in a place? Is he just like in here alone? Or yeah. No, this is the temple of God. God dwells in his temple. And even when he's not allowed to dwell in his temple, if someone doesn't allow him to, God is in every place at once. There's nothing hidden from his sight. All right? Verse 3. Jonah. How? Okay, I'm sorry. We're going to read Jonah 1, 3. Oh, we just read it. All right, so Jonah went aboard that ship, and he tried to run from the presence of the Lord, but could he really run? No. He was fooling himself, but along the way, on his journey to running from the presence of the Lord, guess what? The Lord's purpose for him, the thing that he had called him to do, would be accomplished. He was to preach. He, were, he, were, he had to bear witness that the one true living God is the God of Israel, the God of the Hebrews. And, of course, these men got saved, right? They received them. All right, so the next thing I heard was we have a hope that others have not taken hold of. I know, we have to search it out. All right, so let me open a new scripture verse here, scripture page. Oh, that is so cool. Let's try Hebrews. 12.1. We're going to try Hebrews 12.1. Reading verse 11, sorry, verse, verse, the last verse of Hebrews 11. Forty one. Is there 41? No, there's a 14. All right. So Hebrews 11:40. God had planned 
something better for us. So that together with us, they will be made perfect. Could we have said it better? Nope. All right. Hebrews 12, verse 1 now. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off every encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with endurance the race set out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, verse 2, the pioneer, the author and finisher of our faith. For the joy set before him endured on the cross, scorning its shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hope is missing in that, so we've got to look somewhere else. We have a hope. I'm looking. All right. This one would do, I think. Philippians 3, 13, 14, we'll check that out right now. Philippians 3, verse 13 to 15. All right, brethren. Brethren, I count myself to have not, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 15, let us therefore as many be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal this even unto you not what I'm looking for. Come on, we're looking for hope. Where's the word hope? I haven't seen hope all day. There we go. Oh, it's about time. All right. Psalms 33. Psalms 33. Oh, Lord, stop eating my feet. Looking. 
Psalms 33, verse 20. Ah. All right, verse 18 to 21. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and to keep them alive in famine. Verse 20. We wait in hope for the Lord, for he is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Amen. Psalms 33, verse 18 to 22. Others have not taken a hold off. I'm trying. I'm just close to just reaching up there and ripping that fan down. Looking. Matthew 6, 1. Matthew 6, 1. It's not a fun thing. Matthew 6, 1. Verse. Ouch. Matthew 6, 1. Verse. Well, we have to read Matthew 5 now. Since I'm Matthew. Matthew 5. Eleven. Matthew 5, verse. Matthew 5, verse 48. All right. Be therefore perfect, as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now listen. Why is he mentioning this? I hear him saying mercy. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice. All right. So check this out. Blessed are they. Okay, so I hear him saying, Blessed are they who show mercy. We're going to read that. For they shall be shown mercy. I'll see you just peeling my foot. I don't have my shoes on right now. Matthew 5 7. Verse 6 to 8. Uh, verse 6 to 8. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. All right. Okay, there was one. Yay. What was the other thing I heard? All right. So we're going back into um, Matthew 6, 1 now. So we just said in Matthew 5, 48, Be therefore perfect as your Father which is in heaven perfect. And Matthew 6, verse 1, Take heed. That you do not do your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. And verse 2, Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, 
do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have the glory of men. Verily I say to you, they have their reward. All right. One more second. Um, one more verse. So we're looking at Matthew 6, 1. Father says, those in need. So Rahab, in essence, remember Rahab? Rahab is who we're studying. She was like, it was kind of like a battle now, you know, because we have the Good Samaritan story. And now it's the Jews in need of help, right? So because she extended, okay, I hear him speaking. Blessed, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. Genesis 12, 3. Mm. So sweet. Genesis 12, 3. Reading verse 2 to 4. We have about everything going for her because she helped the people of God. She confessed God as God. Okay. Genesis 12, verse 2 to 4. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all families of the earth shall be blessed. Do you think Rahab, do you think she knew this? Do you think that she knew those who blessed Israel will be blessed and those who cursed Israel will be cursed? Much less for reaching out to help them. Mm. Well, this was sweet. All right. Oh. Boom. All right, so where are you with this? Okay, blessed are those who show mercy, for they shall be shown mercy. Oh, we have to go in, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Remember what we read in Romans, is it Romans? I think it's Romans, where God says, listen, those who hear the law but don't do the law, he's not pleased with, but those who, but those who, those who do the law, you know, he's pleased with, right? Right. I know it's crazy, but it's all right. All right. So we're looking at that. Now, Rahab was doing something without even possibly knowing it. She was like, you know, possibly if I, if I could just convince these men, you know, if they, um, if they would stay by me or, if I hid them from the people looking for them, they would show me the same favor. Um, they would have pity on me or remember me in that sense. But God was looking at that in a whole other way. Look what he was looking at it as. What did I say just now? I forgot what I just said. Oh, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Right, so when he mentioned being heroes and doers, Something was happening here. Rahab would have heard that the God who delivered Israel in times past from a people whom she blatantly confessed, you know, listen, in Joshua's two, listen, we've heard of what your God has done. And we know exactly what he's capable of doing. And everybody's scared, okay? So she knows, she confessed the fear in the Lord, the God of Israel. I, so now I hear him saying, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And this is what she is doing. All right. So she might not have been a Hebrew woman. 
or or such but she is a gentile much like us we are gentile right we are gentiles that are grafted in to be spiritual jews all right that's what jesus was spiritual jew all right so check this out now so rahab has extended her hand to israel the men of israel and god has not forgotten that why because he said i desire mercy not sacrifice all right so whatever people would have been doing i don't know what kind of people they are or whatever but they weren't the hebrews so they might have had different gods right but rahab had gotten the the conviction in her spirit to do this thing because no no person in a natural thinking would have done this because if they catch you you're in trouble you're a traitor you are selling out your country right so let's read that i desire mercy not sacrifice matthew 9:13 Verse 12 to 14, on hearing this, Jesus said, what did, he, what did they say? Now I hear him saying, hey, why, why, is your, why is your teacher sitting with sinners and prostitutes or kind of, you know? So let's find that. Why does he eat with? Okay, so we're going into Matthew nine, verse ten. Matthew nine, verse ten. Oops, I'm not all the that way. Matthew 9, verse ow, 10. All right. What were we reading before? Matthew 9, verse 13. All right, so we're reading verse 10, so we're looking at 9 to 11. And Jesus passed forth from thence, and he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, Follow me. And he, rose, he arose and followed him. Verse 10, And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publishers and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Verse 11, And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, Why does your master eat with publicans and sinners? All right. So our verse was 13 just now. So now we're continuing verse 12 to 14. On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor. <laughs> True. But the sick. Verse 13. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And verse 14. 
at that time, Jesus, John's disciples came to Jesus and asked, Why is it that we and the Pharisees fast so often, but your disciples don't fast? All right, so stop that there. They are, yeah, they are spiritually discerning, all right? The disciples of Jesus are kind of, they, they have, they know that the bridegroom is here. All right. So they're rejoicing while he's near. Um, see, the mosquito is eating my foot again. One, two, three, I got a few bites. All right. So you see he lined up scripture there for us. Anyway, going on. If I read a little more <coughs> with the bridegroom. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber, the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? No. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them. And then they shall fast. All right. Fear. We lined up scripture on scripture. So we have to read 16 now. Because we read, which one was that? Oh, that was 15. So we read 14 to 16 now. No one put a piece of new cloth on an old garment, that which is put in, to fill it up, taken from the garment, and the rent is made worse or the rip, right? All right, so check this out. So God says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. So helping each other is a form of showing mercy to each other. All right, that's the first thing. Love to each other is a form of mercy to each other. That's the next thing. Um, in this case, we're looking at Rahab now. Rahab, where are you, girl? Joshua 2. All right, in Rahab's case, she went all out for them because she apparently grasped what she had to do right she grasped what she had to do for this it was like listen a, a whole disaster is coming and everybody with israel is going to live and everybody out of israel is going to die i don't mean the land but i mean standing with the people okay so we're reading now in verse 15. then she let them down by a rope through the window for her house was built into the city wall. Ah, so she, so that she lived in the wall. She lived in the wall? Okay. Verse 16. And she said to them, Go into the hills, or the pursuers will encounter you. So she's telling them where to go, where to, where to hide. And hide there three days until the pursuers have returned. Then afterward you may go your way. And the men said to her, we will be guiltless with respect to this oath of yours that you've made us swear. Meaning they'll keep their word, they promise to keep their word, all right? Verse 18, behold, we have come into the land. This is Joshua 2, by the way. Behold, when we come into the land, you shall tie this scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And you shall gather into your house your father, your mother, your brothers, and all your father's household. And then if his own head, and then if anyone goes out the door, the doors of your house into the street, his blood shall be on his own head. And we shall be guiltless. Stop right there. He's showing me the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and the lentils. So we're going there now. You shall take this up. Uh -huh. Put the blood of the 
the lamp on your ow I hear lentil, so or lentil, lentil, not lentil, lentil, mm -hmm. lentil, not lentil. Exodus twelve seven. They are to take some of the blood. Okay. Oh my gosh, that my my feet feels like needles because they're biting my. Oh, I don't know what to do. Well, put some sanitizer on it. Okay. Ah. Please. Okay. Exodus 12, 7. Exodus 12, 7, reading from verse 6 to 8. Exodus 12, verse 6 to 8. All right. You must care for it until the 14th day of the month. And then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel will slaughter the animals at twilight. Verse 7, then they are to take some of the blood and put it on their two side posts and tops of door frames, door frames of the houses in which they eat the lambs. In which they eat the lambs. Verse 8, then they are to eat the meat that night roasted over fire with leavened bread and bitter herbs. All right, hold on a second. We can get another one. Let's go. Exodus twelve twenty two. That scarlet tread hanging from Rahab's house. Hold on a second. Verse twenty one to twenty three. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and told them, Go at once. And select for yourselves a lamb for each family and slaughter to the Passover lamb. Take a cluster of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin and brush the top and the two side posts of the door frame with some of the blood, which is the lintel. When the Lord passed through to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood. He will see the blood. He's in a second. We went too far up. Give me a second. All right, verse 23, Exodus 12. When the Lord passed through to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on top and the two side posts and pass over the door so that he will not allow the destroyer to enter your house and strike you down. All right. That's what he was showing me. The blood of the lamb on the door post and the lintel. Um, the, yeah, the, well, you know what I mean. And the two side posts. All right. So, um, yeah, I said it right. The door post and the lintel. All right. So Rahab's scarlet thread that she had to hang was, guess what? It was something just like that. The Lord has been merciful to them, and now they're going to be merciful to her. All right, so we're going back into Joshua um, 2. I think this thing's going to die in a little while, the battery, so I don't know what's going to happen with that, but we'll see. So Joshua 2. Ugh. Going all the way back to Joshua. Um, here we go. So Joshua 2 reading verse verse 19. And if anyone goes out of the doors and if, if anyone goes out of the doors of your house into the street, his blood shall be on his own head. And she we shall be guiltless. So in other words, we're not breaking our promise. We just told you what to do, right? Just like Moses when Moses said, Hey. Put the blood on your doorpost and don't come out because the Lord will pass by the city. 
and every, every firstborn will die, right? So here's what he says. He says, um, if anyone goes out of the doors of your house in the street, his blood will be on his own head, and we shall be guiltless. We wouldn't have broken our promise. You would have broken your instruction. All right. But if a hand is laid on anyone who is with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head. So in other words, they're keeping their promise, but if they, okay, they're keeping their promise. They have every intention of keeping their promise. But if anybody goes out of the house, they leave the covering. Just like in the days of Moses and Exodus, where if anybody left the covering of the blood of Jesus, they died. All right? Just like now, right? All right. So verse 20, but if you tell this business of ours, we shall be guiltless with respect to your oath that you've made us swear. So if you tell anybody that we came to swear, you have um, sold out yourself. You have broken your side of the bargain and therefore we could break our sides as well, right? All right, check this out. And it says in verse 20 words, he said, according to your words, so be it. You shall tie this scarlet cord in your window through which you let us down. Mercy for mercy. Check this out. Verse 21. And she said, according to your word, so be it. And then she sent them away and they departed. And she tied the scarlet cord in the window almost immediately, right? What? What? Your what? You have credit on your phone? Did it sell? Yeah. You found out? Yeah. I grew. Yeah, you're happy? <laughs> you want to sit down? What time you want? Um, I thought you would have come here first and then we'd have gone, but. When I read it, it's over. Oh, wow. Yeah. But they're not rough with you or anything, right? Yeah. You could use that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, so here's what. So she took it immediately and she tied it. Um, it's much like when the Lord says, No. Now is the hour of salvation. Now. All right. For some people, you come like a savior in the moment that they need help. Or you come like Jonah in their boat. God has sent you to someone in that moment, a time of need. So some people, um, you're like the Rahab. we like the Rahab. To some people, we are like Jonah. To some people, we are like, we, we, okay, God has been merciful to us. We are being merciful unto others. And that is the will of God. He wants us to be, he wants us to have mercy. So some people will go out of their way to do X, Y, and Z. Yes, it's extreme. But when you don't have mercy in your heart, the Lord is taking note. Okay, so this is about mercy, by the way. <laughs> so just like Moses said, put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost and the lentil, or the lintel, not the lentil, the lintel. They told Rahab to hang that scarlet thread out of her window. I have 13% left. All right, so we're going to read out the rest here now, just a second. All right, so in verse 22, they departed and went through the hills and remained there three days until the pursuers returned. And the pursuers searched all along the way and found nothing. Then the two men returned. They came down from the hills and passed over and came to Joshua, son of Nun. And they told him all that had happened to them. And they said, Joshua, truly the Lord has given all the land into our hands. Now even the enemy helping them, right? The enemy has become part of them now. Listen. The enemy is no longer their enemy, but their friend.
friend, and I hear the Lord saying, a blessing will be upon you. He will cause your enemy to be at peace with you. Ooh, I hear him. I'm coming. Okay, give me a second. Oh, no, I lost Joshua. No, I have Joshua. Okay. Proverbs 16, 7. Now, these men who came from Israel were enemies of Rahab's country. And Rahab and her people are enemies of Israel. All right? But there is a saying that goes, one good turn deserves another. And there's a saying that blessed are the merciful, for they shall show mercy, be show mercy. Proverbs 16, 7 tells us, by loving devotion and truth, wickedness is atoned for. By what? By loving devotion and truth. But And by the fear of the Lord, a man turns aside from evil. Hallelujah. Now, she could have sold them out, right? But she didn't. She has tapped in into a spiritual time. She, 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 she knew exactly. She, she remembered the, if I bless Israel, I will be blessed. If I curse Israel, I will be cursed. All right? Check this out. Verse 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even the man's enemies to live at peace with him. You heard that? You got through? Uh oh. You don't think you're going to meet up? Where are you going? Yeah, but where are you going? Wait, you have money? Yeah. But if you don't have, if you don't find her. Huh? Yeah? She didn't know, she, I don't know how she won one to open her mark. How you call her one to open? With $12. Yes. Just now, here. But at least bring it back, right? Yeah. When you come in to see me, what's going on? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I know you're tired of this. You're resting, Frankie? Yeah. Why? Where? Okay, we'll check for tomorrow, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Proverbs 16. Seven. When a man, she's seven, you know. Ay, ay, ay. Just know. <laughs> when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even the man's enemies to live at peace with him. And verse eight better a little with righteousness than great gain with injustice. Stop flashing your biscuits. You're not even sharing any shocks. <laughs> you eat nothing yet. Look, that's yours. All right. So see, that's what's happening. Mercy for mercy. You ever been in a tight situation and the most unexpected person comes through for you? The person who you thought hated you the most? Yeah, God, God works in mysterious ways, all right? Now check this out. We read that. We're looking for Joshua. Joshua 2. We're going back into Joshua 2 now. In verse 24. And they said to Joshua, Truly the Lord has given us the land into our hands, and also all the inhabitants of the land melt away in fear because of us. They are scared scared of the people of Israel because they've heard how great and mighty almighty the Lord is amen they know that they are the people of God okay let's wrap this up 
Joshua 3, verse... We're not Joshua 3. Yes, now we're going into the men remembered their promise to not re rehab. Rehab. I keep. Ah, what are you doing? No, you are knocked down the phone. Not cool. All right. All right, so as they invaded the city, the men remembered their what? Their promise to Rahab. Where is that? Where is that? Where is that verse? The men remembered their promise to Rahab. Or they honored their promise to Rahab. Verse, ouch. Joshua 6, verse 25. It have no water. Nope. Will you drown that? No. Joshua six twenty five, verse twenty four to twenty six. Then the Israelites burned up the city and everything in it. Now they attack, they attack the city, all right, with rehab in it. However, they put the silver and gold articles of bronze and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house. Verse 25, and Joshua spared Rahab, the prostitute, with her father's household and all who belonged to her. Because she hid the men Joshua had sent to spy out Jericho. See? They repeat. And I hear him saying something about the same. He's talking about, he's trying to put like a, kind of like a comparison to how she let them out through the window. It was the same window that delivered her. Because that's color thread hung there. Something like that. Okay? Um, verse 25, and Joshua spared Rahab, the prostitute, with her father's household and all who belonged to her, because she hid the men Joshua had sent to spy out Jericho. So she lived among the Israelites to this day. See, she became the people. She, she, she is one of God's people. Verse 26, at that time, Joshua invoked the solemn oath, cursed before the man, Curse before the Lord is the man who rises up and rebuilds the city, Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn, he will lay its foundations. Aha. And at the cost of his youngest, he will set up its gates again. All right. What is that smell? Oh. oh, hi, I was, my mouth was full, I couldn't say nothing, all right, so you see what happened there, Rahab hide the spies and she delivered his pe her people like that, her family, is it not written somewhere in the word of God that the hour we believe us and our families are saved? Is it not written that he who confesses with his mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord shall be saved? We want to look at those two scriptures right now, both of them. What did I just say? The hour. And what was the other thing? He who confesses with his mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord shall be saved. Amen. All right. So look at this. 
When she said the God of the Hebrews, that's why we say Shema Israel Adonai Lohinu Adonai Echad, the Lord is one. He who delivers is the Savior. Okay, so we're going to read Romans 10, 9. Do I have any more battery? I have 7% now. Okay, Romans 10, 9. Reading verse 8 to 10. Try to pause language when you have to read it like that, but it's okay. All right. Oh, gosh. G-O-S-H. I'm looking, I'm looking. Okay, here we go. Romans 10, 9, verse 8 to 10. But what does it say? The word is near you. In your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. Verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Did Rahab do that? Yes, she did. All right. Verse 10. For with your heart you believe and are justified, and with your mouth you confess and are saved. Did she do that? Yes, she did. She said, your God is the true God. All right? And then, what was the other thing? The, oh, we believe that's not how so we're saved. This is in Acts somewhere, right? Acts 16 somewhere. All right. So the Bible tells us that the all we believe us and our families are saved. Acts 16, 32. So not just her, but her mother, her brothers, her sisters, her father's household. She listed them. These are the conditions, Lord. You said in your word. Now, of course, she didn't know Jesus as Jesus. She knew him as the Lord, our salvation. But she confessed and she was therefore saved. Her and her household delivered. We're looking at Acts 16, verse 32, reading from verse 31 to 33. And they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Verse 32, then Paul and Silas spoke the word of God to them and everyone in his house. That very hour, that night, the jailer took them and washed their stripes. Hallelujah. And without delay, he and all his household was baptized. Amen. Same things going on with Rahab here. Just because of one act of kindness. Just because she decided to step out in. Remember that little thing in his hand? Faith the size of a mustard seed. 5% remaining. I'm shutting down. All right. So because of that one little act that she did, she re she re re repeated how, much, how many times? A hundredfold, right? All right. So we're looking. We're going further into... We have a few more to do. Do you want to do this one more home? I'll do it now. I'm still looking for this Bible verse. We have a hope that others have not taken hold of. Where's that, Pastor? We have a hope that no one has taken hold of or others have not taken a hold of. We're going to have to search it out. But it can be that he's the author and finisher of our faith. We, we take a hold of him. <coughs> But others, to others, he's foolishness to those who are perishing. Amen? He's the hope of the world, the light of the earth, the salt of the earth. All right. We're looking at Job. Job's wife said, curse God and die. It might seem hopeless. They're going to invade the city anyway. Why are you bothering to be the different one? Job 2, 9. Job 2, 8 to 11. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all and sat down among the ashes. Verse 9, his wife said to him, Does thou retain your integrity? Curse God, curse God and die. Verse 10, but he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of a foolish woman speaketh. What? <clears throat> shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. But what did he say? Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. All right. We're almost done. Oh, there's 1%. It's gone. I got to end this. God bless you, beloved.
I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. Okay. Oh, it's charging. But still, I think I should end this. You think I should end this? I think I should end this. It's not charging. All right. <laughs> All right, sorry for that. All right, so Job 2, 8 to 11. Um, the next thing that I heard was his friends, right? So we're going to see where his friends mocked him now. In Job's 2... In Job's 2, verse 11, his friends come. Now when Job's three friends came and heard of all the evil that came upon him, they came everyone from his old place. Alphas, the Temanites, the Bildai, the Shushite, Zophar, the Namanites. For they had made an appointment together to come and mourn with him and to comfort him. Oh, God sent him his friends. All right? The next thing we heard was Job's friends mocked him. Job 12, 4. So those who were laughing with them mocked him. Those who were laughing, laughing with him mocked him as well, right? Not good. Not good at all. What are going on? Pastor Figaro, don't say this. <laughs> okay. Job 12, 3 to 5. But I also have a mind. I'm not inferior to you who does not know such thing as these. I am a laughing stock to my friends. Though I called on God, he answered. The righteous and upright man is a laughing stock. The mockers and the scoffers. Remember, God said, Blessed are those who do not stand in the path of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers and sinners. All right, he said in verse 5, The one at ease despises misfortune and he said i hear him he who faints in the the hour, the hour of adversity adversity is weak we're gonna go there gosh man Oof. proverbs 24 Verse 10. Proverbs 24, verse 10. What does it say? You found anything? Anything but hope? The blessed hope that we lay a hold of, but others have not yet, or something? It's there. I saw it. I, I think we in both ways. Somewhere in Romans, I think. Romans 8.25. Check and see. Romans 8.25. Proverbs 24.10. The thought of foolishness is sin. So what was Job's wife demonstrating? Foolishness. And the scorner is an abomination hmm. to men. What did it say? The scorner is as, a, is as, as an abomination is as an, an abomination to men. I'm biting up my tongue. Verse 10 of 24 just now. If thou faint in a day of adversity, your strength is small. Verse 11. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death and those that are ready to be slain, what does the Spirit give us? Long suffering. All right, read it. Come again. Romans 8 25. But if we hope for that we see not, then we do then do we with patience we first. Nothing about others not taking a hold of it. The blessed hope which we thought was something, but others have not taken a hold of. No? I shall find it. If thou sayest, Behold, we know it, we knew not, thou not he pondereth the heart, consider it. Who pondereth the heart? I. Who, who looks into the heart and knows exactly what's there? God. Here's what he says. He says, 
And he that keepeth thy soul, does he not know it? Does he not know what what goes on inside each man? Here's what he says in, in verse 12. And shall he not render to every man according to his works? Ah, boy. All right, let's see here now. Who's King Asarius? Who's that? Oh, King Asarius. Or King of Asarius. I don't know. King Asar. I heard King Asarius. I don't know who's King Asarius. He gave a command. King Asarius or King Sarius. Cyrus. Cy somebody. The rebuilt temple. I don't know whoever. <laughs> Where is that? He was a Gentile king. And he helped rebuild the temple. Or right, where is that? Give me verse. I have a verse. I have Ezra, I have da Daniel. Cyrus. I have King Darius. King Cyrus, Cyrus. Cyrus. All right, so we have one more to go. We're searching King Cyrus right now. What can wash away my sin? Only the blood of Jesus. King Cyrus and King Darius. What? Mm -hmm. Give me a second. I hit that very hard. All right, so we're looking at King Cyrus and Darius. I don't know why we're looking at Darius, but Darius popped up, so we're going to check out Darius a little bit too. Okay, so let's see here. Him in the Bible. Who is he? Where is he? Ezra 1. It says Ezra 1. Ezra chapter 1, verse 1 to 10. He helps the... The exiles return mm -hmm. from Babylon after 70 years. Okay, Ezra 1, verse 1. In the first year, Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make proclamation throughout his realm and also put it in writing. This is what Cyrus, king of Persia, says. Verse, um, verse 2. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all kingdoms of the earth and has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judah. Verse 3. Any of his people among you may go up to Jerusalem in Judah and build the temple of the Lord, the God of Israel, the God who is in, his, is in Jerusalem, and may their God be with them. Imagine that. The king of Persia building up the Temple in Jerusalem. <laughs> That's the only Gentile king that was anointed by God. Here's what he said, and may their God be with them. And in any locality where survivors may now be living, the people are to provide them with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with free will offerings for the temple of God in Jerusalem. Oh my poor is risen. Yay. <laughs> Can you imagine? He probably slapped himself in the morning. <laughs> he made it a decree, right? Verse 5, Then the family heads of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites, and everyone whose heart God had moved, prepared to go up and build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. Verse 6, Then all their neighbors assisted them with the articles of silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with valuable gifts, in addition to the free will offerings. Now remember, this is what Joshua had done in Jericho, right? He had taken the gold and the silver and everything and filled up the house of the Lord with it, the treasury. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going on. Verse 7, moreover, the king Cyrus brought out articles belonging to the temple of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem. That's right, it will return. And placed in the temple of his lord king cyrus king of persia had brought them my mitridat the treasure 
who counted them to Shish Bazar, the prince of Judah. And this was the inventory. Verse 9. Ten gold dishes, 30. Silver dishes, 1,000. Silver pans, 29. Gold bowls, 30. Matching silver bowls, 410. Other articles, 1,000. In all, there were 5,400 articles of gold and silver. Shish Bazaar brought all of these along with the exiles as they came up from Babylon to Jerusalem. He gave the command, and that was the command. Amen? So he was blessed by God, King Cyrus, mm -hmm. because he did this, right? Yeah, he was anointed, even though he wasn't a Jew. Just like Rehab. Right. Ruth, also. Yep. All right. So we see another shifting of shadows. See what happened there? See, see, the people went from darkness to light. God moved upon the hearts of Cyrus. Mm -hmm. And he gave the command to help the people rebuild their temple. And not just, but return everything that was due unto them. All right. Nehemiah was the one who God used to rebuild the world. Who, Nehemiah? Nehemiah, yeah. Right. Now, this one was Cyrus. We hear the Cyrus. Uh, Cyrus. Yeah. When Nehemiah was a Jew, whom God used. The last one, the last thing I heard in the spirit was the Lord will take what is meant for evil and use it for good. Ay, ay, ay. Hear what Nehemiah says. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17. Then said I unto them, You see the distress that we are in? How oh, Jerusalem lies waste. Where is Nehemiah again? After Ezra. Where is Ezra? <laughs> Ezra. Oh, this way. Ezra. After, after Chronicles is Ezra. Yep. Chronicles, Ezra, then Nehemiah. Hmm. Nehemiah mm -hmm. 2 17. I see Ezra here. I know. That's not Ezra, Ezra, Nehemiah. What is this? This is Chronicles. Then Ezra, first Chronicles, second Chronicles. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I got it. Then Ezra, then Nehemiah. What, which Nehemiah? Nehemiah 2, verse 17. Nehemiah encourages the people to build the walls. Verse 17. Nehemiah 2, 17. That's after Cyrus gave them all the gold and the protection and everything else. Right. So Ezra was the high priest. And Nehemiah was the governor. Mm -hmm. Then said I unto them, You see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we yeah, no, no more a reproach. All right. Now we have to go into after King, what's his name again? Cyrus. Cyrus. After King Cyrus gave that command the next thing i heard in the spirit was god will turn what is meant for evil for good so genesis 50 it had not any scripture with this yeah that's what about joseph that's yeah. what joseph said to his brothers genesis 50 verse 19 to 21 but joseph replied joseph replied joseph <laughs> do not be afraid am i in the place of god verse 20 as for you, what you intended against me for evil, God intended for good in order to accomplish a day like this. To preserve the lives of many people. Amen. When Rahab did what she did, not just she was saved, right? Her brothers, her sisters, her father's household was saved. So here's what she says here. Okay. Uh, here's what the Bible says. Sorry. Verse 20. As for you, you intended against me for evil, but God intended for good. In order to accomplish a day like this to preserve the lives of many people. Verse 21. Therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. 
So Joseph reassured his brother and spoke kindly to them. Now look at this. Just like Joseph was put or placed as a savior to his family or a kind of a shelter to his family, Rahab was placed also as a shelter to her family. See that? See that? Just like how she believed God and it was accounted unto her what? Righteousness. Why? She confessed him and she was saved. Not just that she confessed him, but her whole family got saved. They had to believe. Listen, when she spoke, they had to listen. Because if they didn't go into that house, they were going to get killed. Amen? So, those who were in the house that were saved, they believed as well. All right, we're looking at the next one. I still looking for this hope. We have a hope that others have not taken a hold of. Others have not, yes, yet taken a hold of. If you believe in God, He will provide a way out. Amen. He will always have something waiting for you. But you have to have that spirit of discernment to know that the opportunity is near. Now, if Rahab had not had the fear of the Lord in her, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and understanding, that is what she had. So like, I can use this opportunity right now to deliver me and my household. Amen. So we're looking at Philippians 12, um, 3, verse 12 to 14. I don't know if this would really match, but we'll see, okay? Let us take a hold of, no, others have not taken a hold of. I'm so sure of that. Philippians 3, 12, 14. All right, so what is the moral of this? Why, why, why is Abba showing us all of this? Because this world is coming, is becoming a very cold, very dark and cold place where love waxes cold in the hearts of men. But in the children of God, listen, don't believe this song, I am only human and um, born this way and all this rubbish. Um, one day at a time, sweet Jesus, this kind of, it's good to call on Jesus, but the Lord said, listen, we're led by, one day at a time, see Jesus is good, but I'm only human is rubbish. You're programming yourself to say, hey, I'm only human. I must do like the scientists. I must do what they say. Listen, you have to work according to God. When, when God brings a person to you in need of shelter, clothing, in need of the necessities, safety, in need of um, for you to reach out and extend a merciful hand. Just like Rahab. Rahab was not just a Gentile. She was a prostitute. Okay, she was not holier than thou. But she purposed in her heart to help. And God loves that. He loves when we show mercy because we got mercy that we did not deserve. Philippians 3, verse 12 to 14. Not that I have already obtained all the things or have already arrived at my goals. There we go. I press on to take a hold of that for which Christ has took, taken a hold of me. Verse 13. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken a hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal, to win the goal, to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. What is he looking for? Heaven. He's pressing on towards the gold. Amen. The gold. What is the goal? The goal is to get to heaven and have an eternity with God. Just like Rahab, Rahab desired, she's somewhere in her land and she's sad and that she's there, but she knows that she's there. And the fear of the Lord fell upon the, the people and now it's coming her time. Deliverance has reached her house. So salvation is now. 
and salvation will it will come to those who confess Jesus is Lord. The name Jesus means Lord our salvation. The God of Israel is Jesus Christ, the I am. All right, so God is calling us to step out as Rahab did, to step out as the people in Israel did to be believe him and piece their doors and their lentils or their lintels with the blood of the lamb to extend mercy unto others. All right, let's pray and thank the Lord for this message right now. Father, we just thank you right now for your, your word and just your amazing love and your mercy and the way that you expound the scriptures to us, Father. We just pray, Abba, Father, that each one of us would rise up as Rahab did in fearlessness. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, Father. We ask for the fear of the Lord to fall upon his people. We ask, Abba, Father, that we would have the same courage to step out in that opportunity that we have to be a blessing unto others. To, to help others to... Um, just to love on others the way that you loved on us when we did not deserve, Father. Even so, Father, we pray right now that you would condition our hearts, Lord God, to receive those who are in need of our help. Conditions, condition us and strengthen us that we could stand as if you yourself were standing there because you are. This is your temple. We ask that we be led by your spirit. We ask that we be more than victorious in you, Father. We ask that we be workers in your vineyard, bringing you glory every step of the way. We ask, Lord God, that you be with us on our journey, and you are, wherever we are. Father, we bless your name, and we thank you. In your holy and precious name, Jesus Christ, help us to confess that you are Lord, God of Israel. And there is no other. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, this is the word of the Lord. I hope it was encouraging to you. If it was, share it. If it was, be a bless if it was a blessing unto you, believe be a blessing unto others. Not in that. <laughs> All right. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. In his name. Hallelujah.